Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope that everybody had a beautiful Rosh Hashanah. I hope that everybody had an easy, meaningful fast and that everyone is uh, getting geared up for our beautiful uh, Chag of Sukkot. Um, we are um, excited to be with you tonight to once again discuss our blueprint for our return. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, since we had presented our first return, as you know, our, uh, our preschool and kindergarten um, are back on our campus. Uh, and we've, we've had a couple of weeks with them back on our campus with our uh, preschool and kindergarten teachers and students. Uh, we have uh, learned a tremendous amount from that experience. Um, we have uh, really been preparing our campus and updating our protocols uh, based on our evolving guide on both evolving guidelines, but also in terms of everything that we've been learning on the ground. Uh, so we're excited to share that with you tonight. Uh, tonight is really uh, nuts and bolts town hall. Uh, this is really to uh, go through uh, what it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like, things that um, you know, things that we're doing, things that the students will will be doing when they come on the campus, um, as well as things uh, that really range. Uh, both in terms of information we need from you, but also in terms of when you uh, drop your kids off on campus, what it is that, um, you know, uh, pro protocols that we are looking for. Um, so I, I really just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, the unbelievable team of professionals that I get to work with every day uh, who are on this call, in terms of our, our team of administrators, our faculty and our staff who are incredibly committed uh, both to, um, a safe return to campus for the students that will be returning, but also um, to be able to continue teaching those students and families who are not able to return to campus and to make sure that uh, we continue to teach uh, those students and families. Um, and we are equally committed to, um, to um, making sure that everybody is learning at the level that we want them to. Um, I, I will be starting us off and then I will be uh, passing things off to Shamari Gassner, our executive director. And then I'll wrap things up by, by the end. Um, so um, Sarah, I appreciate you uh, sort of running the show. So if you can get us to our first slide. So first I wanna review the important dates, uh, just to review um, October 13th. Um, October 12th, Monday is a day after, uh, after Sukkot. We will put out a schedule. Um, that there will be um, you know, schooling on that day, uh, but, the, but the schedule might look uh, like a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous learning, um, because we want that we want the kids to get back to learning, but at the same time, we also want to allow uh, as many of our teachers to come back to campus on the twelfth to do all the final preps, all the final things. Uh, our teachers have been on campus already. Our teachers have been coming to campus. Our teachers have been preparing their classrooms, have been preparing their bulletin boards, have been getting their technology training um, with the Apple cameras and and everything. Um, we are also um, our campus uh, will be open to our teachers to come in over Sukkot as well. Um, and, um, you know, and on, on October 12th, we will also um, use our teachers in terms of just bringing all the supplies back that we have, um, you know, allowed our teachers to take to teach at home um, and, um, and, and to get really prepared for October 13th. So October 13th, uh, grades one, two, and six will be returning in person. Uh, and the other grades will remain virtual. Two days later, and so that is on a Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, on October 13th and 14th, grades one, two, and preschool and kindergarten will, you know, are already on campus and will continue to be on campus. Um, and on October 13th, joining the preschool and the kindergarten, we'll have grades one, two, and six returning in person. That is for Tuesday and Wednesday. On Thursday, October 15th, and for Friday, October 16th, we will have grades three, four, and five complete the, our, our lower school. So the, by, by that, by the, 15th, the entire lower school will be on campus. And on October 15th, our entire middle school will be on campus because grades seven and eight will turn in person as well. Um, so for that first week that we are back, for those four days that we're back, the upper school will remain virtual. On October 19th, which is the following Monday, um, our first two grades of upper school, grades 10 and 12, and will be in person, and then it will be virtual. And then on October 26th, grades 9 and 11 in person, 10 and 12 virtual. Um, this is a lower school and middle school um, town hall. 
So just to explain that really quickly, but it's not really relevant to this group unless you have an upper schooler, in which case you'll have your own town hall. Um, we are still rotating the upper school on an, on a, on an AB week uh, school, um, or we're calling it the blue week and the orange week, uh, where there will be two grades on and two grades virtual on any given week in the upper school. This is um, just based on our medical guidelines in terms of having less students on campus uh, to spread things out um, across the campus. Um, so if you have any questions on these dates, please feel free to email me um, or email any of your divisional principals if you are unsure, but you can also look at the calendar. These are in our master calendars and the parent calendars in terms of when these grades will be returning. So if you uh, lose track, it is if you have great kids in grades one, two, and six, your children are returning to school on October 13th in person. And on October 15th, if you have children in three, four, five, seven, and eight, they'll be returning in person and the upper school will be returning the following week. Next slide. I, I wanna give some Sukkot reminders. Uh, before I do, um, I, I, I wanna reiterate um, something that we, uh, communicated over, you know, recently in the last couple of weeks about uh, the travel advisories in our state and about preparations for the, the Chag of Sukkot. Um, we have been, uh, thank God, we, we are grateful that uh, our community and our county um, has been taking the, the appropriate level of precautions and precautionary measures. Uh, our numbers have been looking good and have, they've, they've brought us to this point of sitting with you and discussing the return to our campus. However, in the last few days, we have heard of uh, a number of cases in our community um, locally. And we have also been hearing um, of an uptick in cases in the from communities and Orthodox communities and New York, New Jersey areas uh, in different pockets of New, New York and different pockets of New Jersey. Um, you know, we, we, when we communicated with you last about the travel advisories and about our return to campus, um, we, uh, we, we were using language like we are really encouraging you to really uh, think through uh, your travel plans and whether, whether you should be traveling. We also asked you to consider uh, whether you should be hosting any out-of-town guests. Um, we are in conversation and consultation uh, currently with our medical task force about the uptake in cases in our community and in the other from communities. Um, I am, I'm going to, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to use a little bit of stronger language and really plead with you and really beg you to please consider your plans for Sukkot. Please consider whether you should be having out of town guests, whether you should be going outside of our area. There is an uptick in cases. Um, you know, this is, you know, we, this is what we were concerned about. We were concerned about seeing them taking cases, um, you know, and we don't want it to, uh, to hinder our plans. And we are asking you, please, for the sake of Kehila, we are all in this together in order to open our campus back up and in order to remain open. That's what we communicated in our last communication. It is not just up to the school. It is up to all of us. So I thank you. I, I really, I'm, I'm grateful to everybody on this call, because I know that you've been taking precautionary measures. I know that you care deeply about the health and safety of our entire community. And I'm asking you, this is not the time for us to uh, decrease our, our diligence. This is not a time to let our guard down. This is a time to actually be more vigilant and actually go back to when, you know, when, when things were, you know, when our numbers were not this good, because we don't want to see a return to those numbers. So please, I'm, I'm begging you as I give you these reminders to really, really consider uh, whether your travel really is essential or whether, the, the, or whether your guests coming in are really essential. Um, um, so having said that, um, and, and we, will, we are re revisiting our travel advisories and our travel guidelines. We will put out uh, updated guidelines in the next uh, day or two, um, you know, just, just because there is an uptick in, in numbers. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but as of tonight, we want to remind you: masks, physical distancing. Um, if you're if you're having a, a meal with others, please have it outside. Uh, you know, with anybody outside your household, please have it outdoors at a at, at a physical distance. Um, you know, certainly because when you're eating, you can't wear your masks. But if you're not eating, 
please, uh, you know, and, and, and kids are playing and, and you're hanging out, please, uh, please keep masks on if you're going to be, if you're going to be within six feet, obviously if you're outdoors and, and, and outside of six feet from other people, um, you know, the, the, the guidelines is that you don't need a mask, but if you're going to be hanging out with people, please wear your masks. Um, a, a sukkah is not considered being outdoors. If you're thinking about hosting people in your sukkah, please know that that is not considered outdoors. Um, out of town guests, please, as I said, please strongly consider whether you should be having out of town guests at this point. Um, there's a major uptake in other from areas. Um, and guests should follow the Maryland travel guidelines and get tested within 72 hours prior to arrival. Um, and I just, I just talked about the meal, so we can go to the next slide. Um, if right now, again, currently the, 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 the travel policy is as such, if you're traveling to a state with a COVID-19 test positivity rate above 10%, students and faculty members will not be allowed back on campus until a negative PCR test is, is, result is received or until they quarantine for 14 days from their return. Um, the, the PCR test is not, is not the rapid tests. Uh, the the, the P PCR test usually takes uh, a couple of days at least to get the results back. So I'm just asking you to please uh, consider your, your travel plans about whether, you know, depending on where you, when you're returning, whether, whether those students or faculty members uh, will be allowed back on campus. If you are exposed to somebody with COVID-19 while traveling, uh, you will be required to quarantine regardless of a negative test result. Um, this is not to punish anybody. Uh, this is again about the health and safety of our entire community. I, I beg you to please follow these guidelines. Uh, please make sure that you share the information with us if you have been exposed. It is to keep everybody safe uh, and to keep our entire community safe. If you've been exposed or if you've been in the hot spot or if you're traveling to a hot spot, please inform us. Please don't let us find out by some other means or through social media posts or whatever it is. Please communicate with us and, and cooperate with this. This is for, for the sake of our entire community. Next slide, please. Face coverings while we are on campus. Masks will be worn by all students and teachers indoors except during lunch breaks. Uh, those lunch breaks will be at a six foot distance. Masks will be worn outside, especially when physical distancing is not possible. Um, mask, mask break areas will be made available to students. So um, we know that we had talked about previously about when the kids are outside being able to take their masks off. Um, and we'd like for them to be able to do that. Um, however, we wanna point out that just being outside is not enough. If they're outside at recess or playing with their friends, they are naturally going to be within six feet of each other, and we will ask them to keep their masks on. If they want a mask break, we will make mask break areas available to students so they can be at a minimum of a six foot distance from other students so, they, they, so that they can get their mask breaks. I wanna point out also that gaiters, which are the um, things that look like a turtleneck uh, or like a neck warmer that you pull up as a mask, those are not, are not allowed as a mask and any masks with an external valve, those are the little valves that they have in the masks, those will not be allowed either. We're asking for, uh, for the masks, uh, the, the full masks that have a couple pieces of cloth where you can't blow through. Uh, so please make sure that you have the right masks. Next slide. Personal belongings. Um, in the lower school, the students will keep their belongings, their items with them in their assigned classroom, uh, meaning they, they will not be utilizing their lockers at this time. That is something that we are uh, willing and hoping to revisit in, at some future date. But right now, at, at this initial return to campus, we will be asking students to keep their, their items in their assigned classroom. They will have a space to keep it with them. Uh, fourth and fifth graders should bring their charged Chromebooks to school daily. And please, we, and, and first, second, first and second graders should bring their charged iPads to school daily. What I wanna say about that is that I know that sometimes students will come and they'll drop their bags. Um, you know, if, if they're anything like normal children, they will probably drop their bags at the front door, <laughs> right in everybody's way. Um, but I, we, we urge you and uh, to remind your students to empty their backpack to take out their technology and to make sure that the, that technology gets fully charged before they put it back in their backpack for the next day. 
um, because we because we are trying to maintain a six foot distance between all of our students we just don't want students every minute walking around the room looking for uh, plugs and waiting to charge their iPads or their Chromebooks or trying to step over each other to charge things obviously once in a while if, you know if it happens and it may happen we will figure out a way to do it but we are trying to minimize the amount of charges that need to get done throughout the day in the middle school students will use lockers that are staggered by grade level in the middle school we are potting kids by grade um, and we are trying to um, really also pod their classrooms in terms of where their classroom locations are and as such we are also trying to um, uh, position their their lockers uh, by grade uh, near where they're going to be and we're doing the best that we can um, we will, um, you know, so they will be using their lockers staggered by grade level. Again, charged Chromebooks and laptops should be brought to school daily. Please, again, for middle schoolers, like I said, for lower schoolers, please make sure that those Chromebooks and laptops are charged before they're brought to school. I do want to say something about uh, the, the potting and, and the precautions that we're taking in our hallways and with the lockers and things like that. Uh, when your students return to campus, when they return to school, they will uh, be given uh, all these instructions, either by orientations, whether they're by grade level or by class, they'll be given an orientation about all these protocols. Um, one of those things that they, or some of the things they will see visually when they come back to campus, they will see a uh, tape going down the middle of every single hallway uh, in our school with paws on each side, basically ask them to stay in their lane, to stay to the right of where they're gonna be, so we can actually manage the flow of traffic so people are not bumping into each other. Uh, they will also see signs that ask them to stay to their right. Um, they will see those visual cues. However, I want, and, and, we, and, and all of our classrooms and all of our, and all of our gatherings are going to be, everything's positioned at a six foot distance from, from each other. And people are going to have their masks on. However, I wanna, I wanna make sure that we are being forthcoming with you and that we are giving you the information so that you have all the information up front. When students are walking in the hallway, when they are going to their locker, when they are coming into the building or out of the building and things like that, or when they're going out to recess and back from recess, there, there, there's just not physically enough space for us to tell you that they will never be passing within six feet of anybody at any given moment or at any given point in time. What we are most concerned with, and according to the CDC guidelines and the county guidelines and the health department guidelines, the guidelines are that we are most concerned with people being within a six foot distance for over 15 minutes, right? Meaning that is prolonged exposure. The term is prolonged exposure and that's what we're concerned with. So if, you know, if people are passing by each other to go to their lock or people are passing by each other on their way to recess within six feet with a mask on, that is not considered prolonged exposure. Similarly, there will be times where a teacher wants to go over and help a student. And as long as that is with masks on, and that is, you know, shorter than, that is a brief interaction, that, that is a brief encounter, that is not um, more than 10 or 15 minutes. We are, we are you know, we, we are basically allowing our teachers to do that. If our teachers need to pass out a packet, or need to pass out something to a student, that is okay. According to our medical task force and our guidelines, that is okay for them to do. That is a brief interaction that is not prolonged exposure. Again, as long as both people have their masks on, it is okay for us to pass by each other or, uh, or be near each other as long as it's a brief interaction. So I just want to make sure that you understand that there's no way for us to guarantee that your child will never, ever, ever pass somebody within six feet. That is just, yes, we can tell you that our desks are now all situated at, at least six feet apart from any other student or from the teacher. We can tell you that for any prolonged period of time in their classrooms and things like that, they will be at, at a six foot distance. But I can also tell you that when they're going out to recess, when they're going to lock or things like that, we just want to be forthcoming with you that if you are concerned that even a brief interaction, even if it's uh, you know, a couple minutes, then that, that's, a, that's a conversation that we need to have and that you may want to consider at this point in time, whether you want your, your children to owl into the classroom using our owl technology. Um, we just can't guarantee that they'll never come into contact with anybody. Next slide, please. Lunch and recess. Lunch will be eaten in the classrooms or the designated outdoor spaces. We do have outdoor tents available. 
um, and, and we will have designated spaces by, by division. Uh, school lunches will be delivered directly to the classrooms. Um, and um, in, the, in the middle school, the school lunches will actually be delivered uh, to a main point in, you know, by the office and the students can come and pick it up as they're going to their lunch spaces. But in the lower school, the school lunches will be delivered directly to the classrooms. Um, recess will be held by pod in designated spaces. Um, so again, the pods are in small, um, small pods within grade levels in the lower school. They will have designated spaces for recess. In the middle school, they will have designated grade level areas. Restrooms. I know that there were many questions in uh, previous town halls about restrooms and we, we kept saying we're going to push those off. Um, so now we're here. Restrooms will be clean and sanitized twice daily. Um, we are going to designate restrooms by division. Each, each division will have a restroom that is de designated to them and for them. Students are not permitted to congregate in the restroom. Uh, what that means is that if all stalls are occupied, and we will be talking to the students about this, if they walk into a restroom and all the stalls are occupied, meaning all stalls and urinals, the students should then go outside and wait outside of that restroom by designated space um, and allow enough space for people coming out of the restroom. And if, you know, if another person comes and sees somebody waiting outside the restroom, that person should wait um, six feet apart from that person by the wall, by the designated space outside that restroom. That, that person should not enter the restroom because then they'll be congregating. They should wait. And then once one person comes out, the next person can go in, go in, go in so on and so forth. And now um, I'm gonna turn this over, starting from the symptoms checks to Shmari Gassner, who's gonna walk us through your protocol as the families. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, as some of our preschool families and our, and our faculty know, uh, we send every morning uh, an alert media symptoms check survey. Uh, the survey will come out at 645 in the morning. It comes through a, uh, an email and a text message reminder. It's imperative, it's really important that you, uh, you, you choose, uh, complete the survey, you check the symptoms of everyone in your household. Please read the survey very carefully each day. And if you have <clears throat> um, any of the potential symptoms, um, to please contact our nurse immediately so that we can take the next steps. But please, we're, 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 we're really asking everyone to make this a priority that everyone checks every single morning um, the symptoms uh, in their household. Uh, how, how are buses and carpools gonna work uh, um, for this? Uh, our in-person temp in temperature checks are still gonna remain uh, for our preschool and kindergarten as per state guidelines. Um, other grades will do their temperature and symptoms checks at home and fill out the survey. Uh, on our buses, the students uh, will be checked by the, the bus aides. Each bus has a bus aide and parents need to wait with their children until they are checked onto the bus every morning. It's really important that it happens that parents do not drop their, kid, their children off and then walk away. They should wait until the bus aides check them onto the bus. All bus riders will be wearing masks. They'll be sitting in their assigned seats um, for social distance purposes, and we'll be keeping the windows down, uh, weather, the weather permitting. Um, if you are in a carpool, uh, we are asking that students should carpool only with their pod members. And if it's not possible to do that, that masks um, and when, uh, should be worn and the windows should be down uh, at, at when, when the weather is permitting. I just want everyone to take a second to look at our arrival procedure map. Um, right over here on Arctic Avenue, the, the white arrow is where everyone will enter. Um, at that point, um, you will see there, they will have our alert media survey checks. This is why it's very important. We cannot allow um, people onto our campus uh, if they have not completed a survey or if they completed a survey that they have a symptom, that uh, a, a COVID-like symptom. Um, once um, our symptoms checks um, have been, once you've completed the checkpoint, if you are in preschool and lower school, you will head towards the back of the, of the carpool lane where if you are preschool, you will continue the same protocol of going into the two lanes where we will have our temperature checks. Um, where, and, and, and if you have a lower schooler in your carpool, they can get out there. 
if you have a lower schooler only in your carpool, you'll, um, will be, you'll follow the traffic uh, controllers and the students will be exiting only on the right side on the perimeter of where traffic is flowing. There will be uh, faculty there and cones there to direct uh, students to where to walk in a safe manner. Um, going back and then you will exit the campus um, once the traffic controller uh, says everything is, is okay and clear to go. If you have a middle schooler or upper schooler, you will enter Arctic Avenue, turn left uh, to the front of the building and uh, students who are in middle school will be left, will be uh, entering through the, audit, uh, through the front entrance. And if you're in upper school, you will be entering through the auditorium. Um, if your lower school or preschool carpool has a middle school student, you will uh, go through the lower school and preschool area and then before, you will not exit the campus, you will then turn towards the, auditor towards the front entrance, drop uh, the next uh, children off, and then exit the campus um, by the auditorium. Uh, maybe we'll give everyone another second just to look at this map. And this is, there is a recording and there'll be tra plenty of traffic controllers, as you can see, that direct you. Um, to, so um, just please familiar, familiarize yourself with this. Our dismissal procedure. Um, our, bus, our bus riders will be dismissed to the bus depot and will be immediately going on to their buses. Um, their bus aides will check them in. There'll be no congregating. Um, and our carpools, we are gonna be sending a dashboard place card for all carpool last names and grades. Please make sure to have that on your vehicle. It'll make our process a lot quicker. Uh, preschool and lower school will utilize the back of the carpool lanes, just like how they get dropped off in the morning. Um, and preschool and lower school uh, students will actually stay in their classrooms until the carpool name is called through a Google Doc. Um, if you have a middle school student in that carpool, I'm sorry, if you have a middle school student, they will be dismissed to their carpool area. We'll, we'll go on the next slide and show where that is. Um, if there is a middle schooler with a preschooler and lower schooler in the same carpool, the middle school student will be dismissed to that area and they will be staying in their classroom until that car has arrived. Uh, if middle school only middle school middle school only carpools will go to the front of the building where they are dropped off in the morning. You can go to the next slide to see how this uh, will look through a map. As you can see, um, everyone enters on Arctic Avenue. If you have, <clears throat> um, depending on, it, there'll probably be a little bit of a backup. Um, we'll go through the faculty parking lot. As you can see, um, preschool, lower school, and if you happen to have a middle school student in that carpool with preschool and lower school students, they will uh, go uh, to the, the recess doors in the back of the carpool and then they will, exit, um, they will exit the campus. If you have a middle school student only, you will enter the campus and where the orange, ar orange arrows are and your middle school student will be there waiting outside uh, supervised um, under the awning uh, to protect from weather, but also to make sure that everyone is outside and then they will exit the campus. 4.30 dismissal, uh, bus riders again will be dismissed to the bus depot and will immediately go onto the buses. Um, uh, please make sure if you're in 4.30 to also have your dashboard place car, uh, a placard on the carpool last names and grades. Um, the, the students um, who are in middle school only will use the back of the recess doors, which, and we'll show them in the, in the map where that is. If you happen to, if you have an upper school student only, or if you have a middle school student and an upper school student, you will go to the front of the building where the main, uh, where the main entrance is. You can go to the next slide and see what that looks like. And you can see there, middle school only will enter, I'm sorry, everyone enters through Arc Arctic Avenue, middle school only carpools at 4.30 will enter and go around to the back of the, of the, of the, to the recess doors, in the back of the carpool lane and then exit the campus. If you have a middle school and upper schooler or only an upper school student, then you will uh, come into the campus, turn left and go to the front of the, um, of the entrance and students will meet you there outside and they'll be out there. Our Friday dismissal will be very similar to our 3.30 p.m. dismissal procedure. Um, the only difference is that our upper school students will also be utilizing the front of the building um, and they will be in different areas and um, we, we will have everyone in preschool, lower school uh, at, go to the back of the doors. If your high schooler drives your lower schooler or preschooler, 
they will actually have to get in their car and go into the carpool line uh, to pick up their siblings or in their carpool. Um, this third bullet point is, is very important. Um, these are new procedures for everyone. We, we really um, appreciate your patience and we understand and, and everyone would like to get their children off as, as fast as possible. We would like our children to get off as quickly and as safely as possible. This is a new uh, procedure that it's gonna take a little bit of time, but as our preschool families know, after a couple of days, it gets quicker and quicker. So please um, make sure to adhere to all those traffic controllers. Please um, be patient with our staff. We are trying to get our students in and out of the building in a, a, as safe and efficient as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Shmaria. Um, so I want to review openings and closures. Um, the Department of Health uh, will determine any very pod closures based on uh, suspected cases. Um, we, we are going to uh, continue to review that and we will continue to update our guidelines as, as needed. Our, our, right now, I want to remind everybody about um, our metrics. I know that we publish these, but I just want to review them because we've, we've had some questions, especially as people are looking at their own metrics and, and researching, uh, researching the metrics. Um, when you look at the metrics there, the metrics are put out at a one day, three day, seven day, 14 day averages. Um, our main, maintained opening is based on a positivity rate of below 5% and, a, um, and, and uh, below 10 cases per 100,000. What we are looking at for the, both of those numbers is a seven day average. In terms of opening our campus, we are looking at a seven day average of both a positivity rate of below 5% and below 10 cases per 100,000. Um, in the event of a closure, one, in order to reopen, we are going to be looking at a 14 day average of cases of 10, uh, below 10 per 100,000 and a positivity rate that is below 5%. So we're basically taking um, a, a, a more stringent view on both ends of the coin uh, to really maximize the health and safety in our community. Uh, the current stats right now, uh, as of 925, the seven day positivity rate is a 2.5%. And uh, as of 928, the uh, seven day cases per 100,000 is at 7.5. Um, and the preschool and kindergarten closures will be determined by the Department of Health. Um, so we will, you know, we will continue to keep preschool and kindergarten families apprised of any, any changes because that, that is uh, under different licensing, which is why we are currently, uh, why we currently have preschool and kindergarten on campus. Um, action items. Um, we will send relevant forms in our follow-up email tomorrow. Um, you know, for those of you who have responded to bus and lunch, um, you know, thank you. If there are any changes, uh, we have been sending out communications to the families that have signed up. Uh, if you've received those confirmations, great. If you have signed up but did not get a confirmation, please let us know. If you did not sign up but still want to sign up, please let us know. I mean, we, we need to know now um, because we can't just keep adding people, especially given the social distancing guidelines on our buses. Uh, lunch, if you have not signed up for hot lunch, please do so. Uh, flu shots, I want to remind everybody, all students and faculty are required to receive a flu shot by November 1st in order to be on campus. Uh, if you have not done so yet, please schedule your flu shots. Please don't wait for the last minute. Um, and I want to remind you, if you, are, um, if you are going to your doctor or CVS or anywhere else to get your flu shot, please make sure that you get proof of that flu shot. Uh, please, because we will be asking you to show that to our nurse. Um, please make sure that you have something to send in as proof of the flu shot. Um, the COVID policies waiver, we sent out a COVID policies waiver for everybody to sign. For everybody to sign. If you have not done so yet, please make sure that you sign that, uh, sign that waiver. Um, also a virtual opt-in. Um, we have asked, especially now given more information that we're sharing with you, if you wish for your student to be owling in uh, using the owl technology to, to uh, zoom into the class and remain virtual for the time being, um, please make sure that you fill out our virtual opt-in. Um, we will continue to send out so you can fill it out. Please don't tell us last minute. 
This takes real, uh, real careful consideration and planning on behalf of our teachers. We want to give them ample time to plan for your students. We want to make sure that they are sending home whatever materials your student is going to need. Please make sure that you fill out the virtual opt-in. Please don't wait for the last minute. If you're on the fence, I understand, but please don't be on the fence until the last day. Please tell us before we, before we get into Sukkot. Um, and lastly, they're out, they're, we do have outdoor uh, tents, as I, as I mentioned. Um, we do not have outdoor, outdoor furniture under those tents. Uh, those tents are not just used by, I mean, meaning the, 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 they're out on the track and those tents are not, are, and that track is not only used by our school. Um, then if we use those tents, uh, we, we just don't wanna um, have our furniture out there. Um, we, um, so if you wanna send a yoga mat or a towel uh, with your students, uh, please feel free to do so. So if they do wanna go outside and sit under those tents or sit outdoors, uh, so they have a yoga mat or a towel, uh, we, you know, we, we, we did talk about, um, you know, whether, you know, whether, whether your, your child can bring in like a, you know, one of those camp chairs that folds up into like a small bag. Uh, I can't guarantee you that it's going to fit in the locker. And if it does not fit in the locker, we're not going to allow it. Um, so if, if you want to test it for a day, fine. But if it does not fit in their locker, they'll, they will be wearing that bag with that chair all day or keeping it on the back of their, of their chair all day. Um, but otherwise, uh, feel free to bring in a yoga mat or a towel for outdoor learning times. So that is, I know that we just threw a lot of information at you. It is 8.37. Um, we, we have a little bit of time, um, but I, I, I do hear, I'm told that there is a big debate tonight at nine o'clock, so we wanna let you go before that debate. Um, I know that it's important to us, um, but I, I do wanna be able to take some questions before I do. Um, I, I just want to uh, reiterate one thing and then just make one last comment. The symptoms checks. If anybody in your family is exhibiting any symptoms, if anybody in your family has been exposed, if, if anything on that list is relevant to your family, I beg you, please do not wait until that morning to inform us with that symptoms check. There are other modes of communication. Please email us. Please text us. Please do whatever you want. But the moment you know that you've been exposed or the moment you think that somebody in your family has been exposed or is exhibiting symptoms, you do not have to wait for our symptoms check text to come through. Please let us know. There might be people already on their way to school, um, you know, and, and, and at that point it's too late. Please let us know as soon as you know. Lastly, and then we will open it up to some questions if you want to send in your questions. Um, you know, we, we, we want to reiterate that this is, um, you know, this, this effort, that we've put this monumental Herculean efforts that we've put forth in terms of a safe return to campus is not just about returning to campus. Um, yes, we wanna be back with our students. Yes, for the mental health and well being of our students, we all wanna be together. But we are also doing everything in our power to make sure that we maintain the education you expect at Berman, whether your child is in person, whether your child is going to be zooming in through our technology. Um, we have been going through professional development with our teachers. We've been going through training with our teachers to make sure that we maximize the education for every single student. Yes, we want you to communicate with us about symptoms and we want you to communicate with us about things that are going on that we need to know about. But please continue to, to talk to us about your kids' education. How are things going? How are they doing? We want to hear about that because this is not just about getting back to school and it's not just about trying to beat COVID. This is about making sure that we maintain a level of excellence in education for your students. So please continue to communicate with us as we continue to plan for the students' return, whether they are coming back in person or throughout. So I'm getting some um, questions over, over um, the group chat. Um, I have some as well, Dr. Kassan, if you'd like for me to share some. Um, sure. I, I, I do want to tackle one that's in the chat because it's, it's one that I've been asked a couple of times over the last few days um, that um, how come we are not waiting for two weeks? Why are we opening right after Sukkot and why are we not waiting for two weeks after Sukkot to reopen? Um, that is a good question. Um, we have taken all the appropriate precautions to keep numbers down in our community and in our county. 
we are keeping an eye on that. Um, we have reason for concern at this point in time because we are starting to see some cases pop up in our community again. Um, but we are still, we still remain hopeful uh, that we will uh, continue to move forward with our plan, but we will continue with our medical task force to stay vigilant and take a look at those cases and th take a look at uh, what's going on in our community. The, the reason why we wanna continue to open is because we want our students to come back to school. We want to be back with our students and our faculty. And we believe that, you know, as a Kehila, as a community, we have all committed to taking precautions and we beg you and we plead with you to continue over Sukkot to take those precautions. Please make um, strong, responsible decisions on behalf of the community about your travel plans. If you have travel plans for Sukkot or if you have plans to bring in people from outside of the community to the community, because us returning after Sukkot is really dependent on all of us. If people do travel and if people do travel in from the outside and we see those numbers start to tick up, we may not be able to return. But we wanted to return after Sukkot because at that point, we don't know when this, when this cycle is going to end. So for example, if we wait for two weeks after Sukkot and we continue to stagger the return to campus the way we're staggering it, meaning the first week is going to be staggered of a return for lower and middle school, and then the following week we're going to start upper school, we're really looking at going well into November before every student gets the opportunity to come back to campus. At that point, we're really a hop and a skip to Thanksgiving. So then if we're gonna, every time our community members have an opportunity to travel, instead of us actually abiding by travel uh, guidelines, if we're gonna say, you know what, there's gonna be people that travel, we're just gonna close down for two weeks to allow people to do that. Then it's gonna be two weeks after Thanksgiving. And then we're gonna you know, close down for winter. You know, by the time we, we come back for two weeks after Thanksgiving, we're basically two weeks away from, from winter break. And then we're gonna to wanna to close down two weeks after winter break. At that point, it's a vicious cycle where we have to decide as a community, if we wanna do this and we wanna get this done, I beg you, just let's hunker down. We're all in this together, so let's make sure that we're in this together. So right now, we, our plan is to continue, continue our, return, our return plan after Sukkot. We are continuing to keep numbers, uh, you know, an eye on the numbers that we're seeing in our own community. Just in the last few days, we've received word that in our own community, we're, st we're starting to see some cases. We will keep an eye on that. If things change, we will let you know. But for now, we beg you, instead of finding the ways uh, to travel and, and bring people in from out of town, please just help us by, uh, you know, by, by, by following our guidelines. Thank you so much. That was one of the questions that I have. I have a couple of questions for the lower school. Um, so Mrs. Hanlock or Mrs. Israel, if one of you is able to unmute. Um, one very quick question. Do third graders need to bring in any type of device um, when they I, return in person? No, our plan for third grade is to give them um, a school Chromebook for use when they are in the building. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then can you talk a little bit about movement throughout the day um, in terms of the lower school students will be in a specific classroom, but how are we going to integrate movement so that the, the kids are getting um, some more activity throughout the day? <laughs> so um, just like our lower school teachers have always done, they create opportunities for movement in the classroom. They use Go Noodle. They use different types of exercises and they monitor sort of the, the temperature of the class and what they might need. And while the students won't uh, be congregating in the classroom setting, they will be allowed to stand in their, in their space and to do a go noodle or an exercise. And they'll also have an opportunity at least twice, not including the lunch recess break in the middle of the day. There is a 10 minute break in a, a period in the morning and in the afternoon where the students will have an opportunity to stretch, have a snack. Um, again, when they're eating, they need to be seated at their desks. But I have I've observed myself that our teachers are very good at monitoring what's going on in the classroom setting and knowing when the students need a physical or mental break. Sarah, can I jump to some of the questions on the chat? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. Um, so um, there's, there's a question on whether students can bring their own lunch. The answer is yes, students can bring their own lunch. There's also the hot lunch program from school that will be delivered to, as I said, to the kids' classroom in the lower school or designated space in the middle school. 
do you have a designated COVID testing location or organization? Our school nurse, Nurse Kotek, does have, um, does have um, uh, organizations and locations that we can recommend. Uh, you don't have to use those, but we do have some recommendations. And again, our recommended test is a PCR test. Uh, that is what we are recommending. Um, um, somebody has a, a, uh, a question about out of country arrivals into, into their home. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to just follow up with me over email. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a pretty um, unique uh, situation. Um, you know, so, so let's follow up if you can email me. I'll try to follow up with you this week. Um, you know, again, so, you know, another question about, about uh, the two weeks after Sukkot, I'm just going to reiterate uh, the, you know, the, that, 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 that cycle, um, you know, if, if we are going to assume that, if, if we are concerned with people traveling over Sukkot um, and not following certain travel guidelines or certain precautions, um, then, you know, shutting down for two weeks after Sukkot, I'm, I'm just not certain that that's going to give us the level of confidence that we're looking for, because the same is going to hold true on what people are doing those two weeks that everybody's in, you know, not supposed to be traveling, not supposed to be going anywhere. Um, so right now, again, we, that that is, we are, we are holding on that, our position on that. If anything changes, we will let you know ASAP. Um, there's a question about ventilation indoors. What efforts are being made to ensure indoor locations have adequate ventilation to minimize stagnation of room air and classrooms? Uh, we are recommending, uh, first of all, uh, I want you to know that we have uh, been changing out um, all of our filters to, now it's a whole new education, to MERV 13 filters. Uh, that is now the industry standard uh, for this kind of stuff, to block out as much of the droplets. Um, you know, that, so, so that was one of the big things that, that we've been doing. Um, and we are recommending um, that our teachers leave doors and weather permitting windows open um, for that air, um, uh, for that ventilation. Why are we not asking for testing before school starts? Uh, we have spoken with our county. Um, that is not what is being recommended. I understand that there are some organizations that are doing that. They are not recommending mass testing before we start school. Um, they, they feel that that is going to be um, um, really creating a superficial number um, of, of our positivity rates in the county, but also, uh, you know, when, when you test a mass amount of people without any, um, any uh, suspected cases or symptoms, but also, and more importantly, uh, it gives a false sense of confidence because um, if we are asking for certain tests that are going to take three to five days to get results, then basically we're taking a snapshot in time. So let's just say you get the test five days before we all go back to school, then you get those negative test results, but we don't know what everybody's been doing from when they got that test till when we returned to campus. So we have been advised by the county health department to actually not mandate or require mass testing. Um, if a child needs to miss school for a day or two, not related to COVID, can he or she sign on to virtual system? If you know that you're going to be traveling or if your child is sick, not related to COVID, or if they're you know, going you know, to get some procedure, whatever the case may be that you know about, I beg you to please communicate with your teachers and principals uh, and as far in advance as you can um, so they can plan accordingly. Um, you know, as you can imagine, trying to teach students in person and students that are on the OWL technology is incredibly challenging. We are doing everything that we can to support our teachers and our teachers are being incredible sports um, and, and real professionals about this. And yet, yet at the same time, it is an incredible challenge. So please give us as, as much advance notice as possible. And if your child is owling in and you like them to come back to campus, we ask that you give us advance notice. Uh, just give us a couple of days heads up so we can integrate them back into the classroom. Uh, you know, cause it's, again, it's just hard when people are going in and out all the time. We're not trying to penalize anybody. We just want to be able to stay organized and planful for your child. So if you know that your child's going to be out and wanting to owl in, or if you know that your child is currently owling and you're going to want them to come back in, please communicate with us. Give us at least a couple days heads up so we can plan accordingly. Um, I have a question. My rule of thumb is always, yeah. if it comes in twice on the chat, then I'll ask it out loud. So there's a couple of questions about snow days and if they are no longer. You know, um, 
Yeah. I, I, this has been the one that we've been talking about. You know, we, we, we've been talking about whether we have all just killed a snow day forever. Um, but, you know, we are not going to take any position on that right now. Um, that, 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 that is heartbreaking to think about. It is a, a childhood staple to go outside and play in the snow. It is part of growing up. Um, so we, we did not take an official position on that yet. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it is always funny to remember when, when my calling a snow day used to be the biggest stress in this community. So <laughs> I yearn for those days again. Um, oh my gosh, there's, there's a bunch of questions coming in. Um, and I know that people want to go by nine. Um, and that Susie, Susie Israel said, snow days are from Hashem. They are signed from Hashem. So uh, we, we, we should listen. Um, we mentioned negative PCR tests are needed. Um, and someone asked about antigen tests. Um, would that work as well? Um, we, I, I can't answer that right now because we are going to go based on the guidelines that uh, we are discussing with our medical task force. Right now, the medical task force has asked for PCR tests. Um, I'm happy to take that question back to the medical task force about antigen tests. I know that there are new tests coming out, um, you know, constantly. So um, I know that the Abbott tests just came out, for example, so or are coming out. So I'm, I'm happy to take those out and update our guidelines. I, I want to remind everybody that, you know, everything is evolving. So if we put out guidelines, those guidelines might evolve and we are going to put more information out. So the the kind of testing that's required might evolve. Our travel guidelines might evolve. Um, you know, so please bear with us because these things are just evolving. Uh, did the school consider did the school consider mandating two weeks at home for those families that choose to travel or have out of town guests? Um, you know, now with an uptick uh, with an uptick in cases both locally and in other from communities. Um, you know that we've just heard about over the last couple of days. Uh, that is uh, that that is a conversation that. Um, we are we are having now, um, and we will update you hopefully in the next couple of days to let you know whether we are going to be updating our travel guidelines in any way uh, for travel or for in, out of town guests. I know that a couple of our local schools have already put out guidelines uh, for people who are traveling or have guests traveling from out of town, and uh, it's certainly something that we are discussing and considering now. What happens if someone who rides a bus tests positive? They are cross pod kids. Uh, that is correct. They are cross pod. Uh, that was a decision that we had to make about whether we should shut down transportation altogether. We know that we have families that really rely on that transportation. We are hoping that with masks and social distancing and windows down, uh, that we won't have to shut down uh, pods. But um, really, we're we're going to have to take that. If there's a positive case, we're going to have to take that to the health department and give them all the guidelines and and see and in consultation with them, figure out where we go from there. Um, I, I, I spoke already about changing from in-person to Zoom. If we start in person and are not comfortable with staying in person, please let us know. Please communicate with us. Give us a heads up. Let us know how you're feeling, what you're thinking, so we can work with you and we can work out some timeline for you to be able to let us know so we can plan accordingly. Again, if you're in person and are not comfortable with staying in person, we're not, we, we, we're, we're not going to tie you down to the chair and tell you that you have to stay in person if you're not comfortable doing so. But we do have to get you some, we may have to get you some materials and things. So there might be some delay in getting you everything you need to go virtual. But, you know, please just let us know where, where your head is so we can work with you. Um, have you considered adding uh, HIPAA filters in the classrooms? Um, you know, that's something that Shamari and I can discuss. Um, I'm, I'm sure that Shamari has heard about it. Um, I, I don't know. Um, but I won't, I won't speak for Shamari. Um, um, somebody wrote antigen tests answer prior infection, but not current infection. Okay, thank you. That is coming from a doctor. Uh, so thank you for clarifying that. Um, uh, what about all the previous questions emailed in? Will you be following up with additional info and answers given the short timing? Uh, please, if I, if I missed the question, please write it in the chat now. Um, um, and now there's a back and forth about antigen tests. So we will get back to you about antigen tests. What about cough and sneeze protocols when kids wear masks? Um, that that is, um, they're coughing and sneezing into their into their mask. Basically, we're not. I mean, right now our guideline is not to take off their mask and cough or sneeze into the air. Um, 
you know, the, the purpose of the mask is to block their droplets from being let out into the air. So that, that is what we are requesting. If, if those guidelines evolve or change, I will let you know. Will they, will they, will they still be having things like Oneg? Rachel, you wanna take this one? We, uh, we will still have Oneg much like we have uh, since we went virtual in March and the ONEG will be um, available via Zoom to all the students while they're sitting in their classrooms in their pods. And why do the fifth grade lower schoolers need Chromebooks in class? Uh, even, you know, even when the, um, the students were in school, we did try and often use one-to-one -on -one -to -one devices in those settings because they're often working on um, their documents that they, on a Google Doc, that they want to have uh, access, the teacher wants to have access to it as they're writing in the classroom setting. And also we will most likely use the Chromebooks and the headsets. We want all of the students to come with their headsets um, to run small groups, small, with small group instruction within the classroom because it's gonna be more difficult for us to bring the children close together. So we do want all of our students to have their technology available to them on a daily basis and then to be able to take it home in case for some reason we're in a position where all of a sudden they find themselves at home for two weeks. Um, we, we have settled the antibody antigen debate um, uh, and, and antibody tests are the ones that test for, for um, past and antigen is for current. So now we are on the same page and we will get back to you on whether or not antigen tests is on the list of approved tests. Um, does that mean that there will be no virtual school on October 13 and 14th for grade seven? No, um, 13th and 14th is sixth grade in person and virtual school for the other grades. Uh, would you please speak more about the OWL technology and how that's going to work in reality? Um, you know, I, I think that we should actually make more time specifically to go over what the OWL technology will look and feel like. Um, so we will, those of you that have opted in to uh, OWL technology, uh, maybe we can, you know, we, we can certainly email you or we can send an email for others who might, uh, who might still be interested. Um, and I have a bunch of questions about um, seating and break times in the middle school. Cleaning expectations and assigned seating of students in the middle school when switching classrooms. Um, our students in the middle school do have assigned seats in their, in their classroom. They will also be asked that when they're switching classrooms, again, they're, they're using that, the, all those, they will have each grade level pod will have a bank of classrooms. They will still be asked, each student will be asked to wipe down their own desk uh, with uh, our sanitizing wipes before they leave that classroom. Um, um, what happens to lower? Again, I'm, I'm trying to read all this and it's 8.59. There are many more questions coming in. Sarah, if we can record the chat, that would be very helpful. Um, and I'm happy to make more time. I mean, we, we do have a couple of weeks before we return. If people want to do another town hall, um, or we can try to answer as many of these questions in the, in, in the FAQ. But please don't hesitate and keep them coming. Um, thank you guys so much for your time. I know that there are more questions and I don't want to ignore them. We will either put something out in writing or we will plan another town hall. Um, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your confidence. And please stay tuned because, as I mentioned, because there is an uptick in cases both locally and nationally, we are discussing now how to best update our travel guidelines. Um, so, and I know that people have made plans, but as this thing evolves, we need to evolve as a community and we need to band together as a community. So please stay tuned. Thank you to all of you and thank you to all the professionals on this call who are helping make all this happen. Have a great night and enjoy the debate.